from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. Alright, well I don't know how this video is going to go because we haven't done it for a while. And considering we know Old Mates intelligence is about that of a one second old baby, this video could be disastrous. If you've been around the Backyard Tech channel on YouTube long enough now, you'll be very much well aware that I love MX Linux. And for a long time, MX has used the XF, XFCE desktop environment as its default desktop. Which, to be honest with you, I like XFCE. Now the thing is, you could add desktops to it in the past. Well now, the developers of MX Linux have come up with a way of uh, giving you another default desktop environment. So you can choose XFCE, or now you can download the ISO with Old Mate's other favorite desktop environment. And for this video, we're gonna have a sticky beak at the latest from MX Linux, 19.2 KDE. Linux. Windows. Systems and apps. This is the Backyard Tech System Setup and Product Review. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is System Setup and Product Review time here at the Backyard Tech Channel for weekend Saturdays. And with the intelligence level that I have, which is equivalent to that of a one second old baby, this video could be disastrous. And most of you would agree with that IQ level too especially those who believe well, at least the 15 controllers would anyway. But how? Different story. Anyway, all right. Now, MX Linux. Now, we know people out there these days, you've got the typical desktop environment people who just use the regular desktop environments out there. Nine times out of ten for me, it's either KDE or XFCE. You've got Cinnamon. You've got the Mint desktop. You've got um, LXDE, Mate, a whole lot of them. GNOME 3. Now, I don't like GNOME 3. Now, I've got all the GNOME 3 people howling on me. But I'm also not keen on the tiling window managers either, even though by law I have to be. How can you not like tiling window managers? They're the best. They're the best. I don't like them. If I don't like them, I'm not going to bloody well use them. Now, as far as MX Linux is concerned, you, you would obviously, you know, install MX Linux, and there are a lot of people who don't like it, and that's fine. I do. So if you don't like it, that's your opinion. That's fine. I like it. So you get these people, you, you install MX Linux, you end up with the XFCE desktop. If you don't like it, you would then go to the package installer, go to desktops, not Synaptic, just package installer, go to the desktops and add any other desktop flavors you wanted. Well now, one of my favorite desktop environments, and again, I'm gonna have people screaming at me because how could I like this desktop environment? Well, it's got a soft spot for me because it's what I was introduced when I started playing around with Mandrake Linux. MX19.2 now comes as an ISO ready to walk out the door with KDE. And I want to thank a friend of mine up there in New South Wales who got in touch with me last week, not just to check up on how I was mentally, but to say, hey, old mate, MX19.2 is now out with both XFCE slash Fluxbox, and I don't like Fluxbox. Now I've done it. How can you not like Fluxbox? It's the best desktop environment ever. I don't like it. But KDE. So now you can go and get the ISO, and instead of having to you know, install MX Linux, then go to the package installer and then add KDE. You, you've got it out of the box. So I thought for this video, let's have a sticky beak at MX19.2 KDE. Okay, now, slightly different to what we would normally do for our uh, setup and product reviews. You can see on your screen there, six gig of RAM quad core CPU and 120 gig hard drive. Now that is mainly due to the fact that we know that KDE is slightly heavier than that of XFCE. But, from what I've been told, 
the developers at MX have lightened up KDE a little bit. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, let's get this going. Look at this. Now, for uh, lack of argument purposes, this is running a full UEFI secure boot setup. Okay? And you don't run BIOS now. Well, everyone else can. I'm not allowed to. It's amazing that, isn't it? And yes, it is going to take about 300,000 years to install because it's going on to uh, non-solid state media. Which is obviously massively problematic because it takes, you know, 300,000 years to do anything on mechanical audio, uh, mechanical media, doesn't it? Wow. <laughs> it is now 10 past 8. November the 8th, 2022, uh, 2220. Huh? Okay. Righto. Um, I'll show you the panel later, guys. Um, next, yes, next, well that's definitely not right. Yes, I am more of an idiot. <coughs> Hang on a minute, guys, I've got the sneezes. Hold on. Sorry about that. I've got the sneezes this morning, trust me. All right. And there we are. Well, this is, this is, uh, this looks slightly different. It's going to be interesting to see how it looks in about 300,000 years time, because I'm putting this on, you know, mechanical media. So it takes a long time, a really long time. You know, it takes the other half's laptop, you know, 27 hours just so she can use it. And that's from sleep. <laughs> All right. <coughs> the cold weather's not doing me a lot of good at the moment. I keep sneezing. No, I haven't got it. I haven't put myself in a position to run the risk of getting it. Anyway, so while this is happening, um, I love the fact that people don't seem to accept the fact that there are those of us out there who are not keen on tiling window managers or window managers or anything like that. Um, I've mentioned this before and people have gone, oh, why do you like KDE? It's a terrible DE. When I started with Linux back in 2003, it was Mandrake. And Mandrake by default had KDE. 
So I have always had a spot, a soft spot for the K desktop environment or KDE. Now, even though we know Plasma's heavy, well, it's not as heavy as people say it is. I like KDE and I like XFCE. They are my two default desktop environments, along with, to a point, I say to a point, LXDE. Now, LXDE has been around for, oh God, too long. So when it comes to desktops, I use Everyday XFCE and KDE. My Debian laptop runs KDE. Don't have a problem with it, right? Yes, we know there are lightweight desktops out there that can be set up to pull less than 100 meg in cold, you know, at idle. Fantastic. Yep, no worries. Good on you. I don't need it. You know, anyway, to save video time, I shall be, uh, I'll be back in a tick with um, the end of this. You're watching Weekend Saturdays. Here at Backyard Tech. All right, it's now the 8th of November, 2220. Strangely enough, oh, that doesn't work. Sorry, it's August the 22nd, 2220. 20, <laughs> because everyone knows that when you install onto hard disk drives, it takes so long to do anything. I'll show you the panel once we've got all this set up. But uh, this th this is very slow because of mechanical storage. You know. Mind you, I did find an M.2 drive on eBay uh, last week. It's a 512 gig, which is nowhere near enough for C drive. <laughs> um, I've used probably 250 gig of C drive now. Um, but my old computer here, the fact that it's only a fourth gen Core i7 and I'm running only 32 gig of RAM, an M.2 drive might, might make Windows go better, but it's not gonna make anything else use go any faster. Although I did quote converting everything but the Sun server to solid state drives. Yeah, that's not going to be cheap. Trust me. Four servers or five servers, if I can get the ACE to fire again. So five servers. All right. Um, was it five servers? Yeah, five servers, all solid state. Okay. Um, the main PC converted to solid state thousands of dollars alright some decades later we're nearly finished I'm, I'm still running XFCE across the board but I wanted to see what the guys at um, how they've managed to make this better than having actually adding the desktop environment and how much heavier it is. Um, those of you who despise KDE, yes, you can abuse the living hell out of me for loving KDE. I don't care. I like it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't use it. Okay. Half a century later and we're done. Now this is interesting. You guys can't see this, but what I'm going to do right off the meat of the bat. Oh, sorry. That's not the one I meant to move. That is what I meant to move. <laughs> and shrink it down a bit. 
Now, already I've got a problem. I don't have screen integration. Oops. Hang on. You go use system D. I had a guy, I had a view, I don't know, I think it was a guy, go absolutely dead set off at me for still wanting to use Iron IT in my Linux systems. System D is the way to go. It's so much better. If you're not using it, your computer doesn't work. Really? <laughs> Fair dinkum? You know. Huh. Okay. It's weird. That's my head on a good day. Oh dear. Yeah, okay. So automatically, right off the meat of the bat, big problems. Alright, you can see already, no 16 by 9. So we'll actually... Ah! Now, this is what I was hoping for. Alright, let's see whether or not it'll pick it up. Probably won't. I might have to go and get open VM tools for this. I do have to get it. Jeez, right. have a look at. Wow. Damn it, LibreOffice again. So they're using Muon Package Manager in this case. That's interesting. KDE Partition Manager. All right. Let me um. Let me get uh, open VM Tools and so. Don't worry, I'm not using VM Tools. Okay, I will get open VM Tools because I'm not allowed to use VM Tools because it's illegal. Well, it is for me anyway. Back in a tick. Sorry, I better actually prove that I'm installing open VM tools. You can see here, and I'm doing it the proper way. None of this installed through Synaptic because it never works. So, you can see here I've gone that. Yes. You have to install it. Well, I have to install it. Because if I don't install it, people think that, you know, it, VM tools from ESXi doesn't actually work properly. Okay. So we'll wait for this to time zones roll. That's a worry. Times the date's right, but the time's wrong. All right, so she is heavy. She's very heavy. Fifteen percent of six gig. Now I thought they'd lightened it up. Obviously they haven't. <laughs> Um, all right, so what I want to do, we'll put that over there for a moment. So what are they, system load, I'm going to say, I, right off the meat of the bat, it's KDE, obviously I'm going to like an operating system with KDE. But I've got to be honest, this is actually... So we've got... K-Wallet's in there as well. Console, which I use by default, so it's fine. Dolphins now, okay. Settings. So there's MX Tools. We'll get into that in just a moment. LibreOffice I'll get rid of. So there's MX Tools all the way through, including the NVIDIA driver. Okay, that's interesting. Multimedia, interwebs, no typical games, education. I've got to say, I. Oh, there we go. So, for all you, you people out there that go off their nut at me using the embedded VM tools, I've just proven it to you again. I installed open VM tools because it is so much better. I don't understand why. All right. So let's get that time fixed up because that's actually very, very wrong. Date and time. Thought I had the right time zone. I do. 
automatic. I can tell you now, that's definitely not the right time. Actually, I don't even know when it's 825. Let me just push that up. Looks like the Dell's time's out of whack. Anyway, all right. For crying out loud. I am. There we go. All right. Sorts that problem out. Right. So this is interesting. We've got a system monitor down there which comes with KDE anyway see what they've done with MX oh dear okay all right no well that's that's pretty much standard except it disappears again oh no there it is so it reappears <coughs> so that's all right we get two desktop environments off the bat better than the four so they're using in here muon Oh, this is different. Very different. Okay. That's interesting. So they've gone from the old MX package manager to Muon package manager. Fair enough. Um... So there's MX tools. It's not too bad. Surprisingly, it's actually Sorry, I meant to do name only. Apply. Whoops. Okay. So it's the basic K, it, it is KDE, but what I want to do is see how heavy it is. Just in idle. I'm banking 900 meg. I'm not far off. 834 on 6 gigs. So she is heavy. She's over 10% of the RAM. But I love these people who say, oh, it's too heavy. You can't use it. It takes too long. I don't care. It's KDE. Of course I'm going to love it. Um, an interesting... It, it's... Yeah... There's a lot in here. I mean, for me, I'd be, you know, obviously loosening up a lot of stuff, like get rid of Office. Interesting to see MS, MX Tools is now a full menu, which is interesting. Uh, MX Tweak. Now, obviously, MX Tweak is going to be different under KDE. Okay. Ah, now that's interesting. That's changed a bit. Wow. So you can have it wherever you like. Oh dear. Oh, that's not good. So, MX Tweak has had an S fit right out of the meat of the bat right off the meat, you saw it there. So that's problematic because you don't want that happening when you're making tweaks to your desktop environment. So already that's an issue. Not, not something I would personally be concerned with, but most people out there who want their Linux systems to be uh, perfect, you guys would obviously have a complete SH1T fit. 
What workspace themes have we got? I'm going to blur it, breeze dark by default. Thank you. Desktop themes. See what we get. Breeze. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. What I want to do here, which is a little bit. Uh, okay. Oh, I can't say they aren't. Um, that's all right. Can make the columns actually. Oh, I hate icons going across the screen. Okay, we need dolphin. Is it dolphin or what are they using in this? It is dolphin. Okay, that's fine. I don't have a I, I don't have a problem with dolphin, although a lot of people do. I don't. I quite like it. For a heavy desktop environment, this is actually. Let's have a look at the sysinfo. Okay. I've got. Hang on a minute. Just bear with us a tick, guys. Sorry. Um, that actually doesn't tell me what I'm looking for. Hold on. Uh, console. Yes, I know everyone hates console. It's a terrible terminal problem. I don't care. So Debian kernel 5.6, okay. All my other machines are on 419. I don't I don't believe I need to run anything else. Debian Buster 10. Which is nice. I gotta say, I do like this. What have we got there? Don't need any of that at the moment. Um Wow. So a new system monitor. All right. So you can see there a big discrepancy between HTOP and system monitor. HTOP's over 800 meg. This is sitting at 740 meg of six gig. Nothing on the swap, two gig swap. CPU is a little heavy, but that's, that is KDE. Okay, but all in all, I actually don't mind the way this, the, the look and feel of this. Um, it, look, for argument's sake, she pulls 800 meg of six gig. Okay, so over 10%, right? Because 10% of six gig would be 600 meg. 600, 600, what do I give us? 6,144 meg, so that would be 614.4 meg. So, yes, she's heavier. Okay? I don't have a problem. Because, to me, even with her pulling around 800 meg in idle, it's not like she's super slow. Okay? other than trying to open up Firefox. So, what do we get with Firefox? What do they got for it? 79. I ain't running. I, I'm still sitting on 77, I think. Um, so, you know, I know she's, she's heavy, but it's not like she's not usable. You know. What do we got there? 3011, oh, 3011 one. I'm not even running that. I haven't updated any of my machines of late. I gotta say, I'm, I like it. Conky, standard games, 
Mule one's interesting. Oh no, there's MX package installer there. Oh, I see. So you got both of them. Okay. So you've got Muon, which I think may have replaced Synaptic. I think. Let's just have a sticky beak. But I think. Yep. So Muon has replaced Synaptic. Eh. you can add it back if you wish you don't have to but oops oh, that was stupid i gotta say it's interesting it it has having it as a default desktop actually is better than adding it to an existing mx okay because in, in my experience if you add kde to mx yeah, it's it doesn't work exactly the same as it does having KDE by default for MX. Now, those of you who despise MX Linux, that's fine. You're allowed to despise it. You're allowed to kick it from pillar to post. I like it. I use it. I'll think about it. It may end up on the media PC or the bedroom or the plasma PC. I don't know. It may end up there. But it is nice. Uh, what do we got there? Oh, SMB 4K. Ah, now I had actually heard about this. Yes, I had actually heard something about this. Some people are saying it's actually a really handy, nifty little tool. <coughs> um, see what I can find. Probably nothing. Oh, it's got the media PC. Can't open it, but it's got the media PC. Oops. Okay. Hasn't got it completely. We might be able to, uh, well, might have to fix that up. Have a look at Dolphin. Again, I know the trouble with Dolphin. Okay, yes, I know there's better file managers out there. I don't care. To be honest. That's interesting. It's not really... I might have to do a bit of configuration, but I can sort that out at a later date. I'm impressed. I like it. Uh, it's KDE. Um... I will, I'm, I'm going to get into that SM4K, SMB4K because I have read some interesting articles about it saying that it's a lot easier to manage um, your SMB shares. So that that's something I might have a, a bit more of a sticky beak at. I think one one article I read said it's, it, it is as good or better than Gadman. Um, but we'll see. So there we go. KDE 19.2 with the default KDE, sorry, MX, not, I told you, MX 19.2 with a KDE desktop environment uh, by default. And it is nice. I, I, do, I do genuinely like it. You know, there's, I mean, I know people are going to have an absolute SH1T fit with me for promoting a, you know, what some people see as a crap Linux desk or Linux distribution, but I like it. I like it. Pulse under KDE. It's interesting. There we go. I do. I do like. I do now have screen integrate. Uh, um, cross screen integration, but I do like it. We'll see what happens. Anyway, there we are. 
Coming up later on, I'm going to take a look at the Fluxbox version of MX Linux. Now, no, I'll keep my mouth shut until they have a sticky beak at it. There we are. MX Linux 19.2 KDE. Have a good one.